<laughs> Hi, Jesse. Oh my god. I'm so shy. Hey, mm, Hungry Howie Pizza. Where's Anthony at? Oh. Where's he work at a dealership or something? Um, he's doing um, charity, so he's doing DoorDash. He don't work at the Burlington anymore? Mm -hmm. They pay him. Mm -hmm. They pay him more with DoorDash? Mm -hmm.
Basura. There's no more basura. Hey guys. I'm kind of having. Walk around. Walk around. Get on the bed. I'm kind of having an emotional night. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but earlier um, my mom and my one of my twin sisters came by. Um. The way they kind of showed up was kind of like off to me. Basically, my mom was my aunt that this the family relative that lives here. We'll just call her my aunt for now. She was like talking. So like Max runs in her room and all that sometimes, and Max will play in there. And so earlier Max was changed, or she had wet her like she had spilled water on her. So she ran to my aunt's room, and then my aunt's like. Oh, I'll change her. So they came into here, and like um, my aunt was changing her, and I just happened to stop in, and then I noticed my aunt was on the phone. I didn't know who she was on the phone with, but I was there. I hope she's not on video call while she's like changing Max. And then as I, as I kind of listened in, she was talking to my mom because I recognized obviously my mom's voice. Not obviously, because obviously if you've never heard your mom, you wouldn't know what she sounds like. But you know what I mean. So. So she's like, they're like, my, Max's grandma, my mom is like talking to her and they're like, Max, you want to play? You want to play? And Max is like, yeah. And I'm just thinking it's like a fun, innocent conversation. And then later on, like a few hours later, I'm like bathing Max. And my grandpa's like, oh, your mom's getting ready to pick Max up. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, Fatima. She's like, yeah, Fatima said that she's, they're going to come get Max. I'm like. When who ever told me they're gonna come get Max? Like no one ever asked me. Like no one ever asked if it was okay. Like if I wanted to come, if it was okay if Max came. She, like everyone just assumed that it was okay for Max to go over there. And one, I don't even talk to my mom that close with my sister, so why would I feel comfortable sending? I literally don't let Max around anyone. <laughs> like the whole purpose of the whole reason about my channel is because. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Like, I stay with my kids. Like, I don't leave my kids with anyone. So why would I just feel comfortable? I'm like, what? Home. Like, I don't need I'm Max to go to your house. Like, what? So then I'm like, Max, well, she already doesn't have a car seat. And I'm like, I'm so bad at communicating. And I'm like, thank God, like, this is a good reason for me to, Whoa. for Max not to go over there. Because she literally doesn't have a car seat. I'm like, she can't go over there. Max doesn't have a car seat. But really, even if she had a car seat, I still wanted to be like, uh, no. So, so they relayed that message and then it was like, okay, so now my mom and my sisters or whatever, the whole thing was like, yeah, they, they wanted, the twins wanted to play with Max. And at the end of it all, my mom Whoa. ended up coming with just one of the twins because yeah. the other twin didn't want to come. And like, I've just, my twin sisters, they're like 
12 now and they're in like such a weird fucking age i don't know i don't know if it's just them or 12 year olds but like they just don't fucking talk like they just like i feel like their dialogue is just in their head and granted that's everyone's but they literally do not talk like and I, and it's like I'm like I'm when they came I rem it was a reminder of like why I don't even like being around them. They don't talk like they're one of those guests that you have to like talk to like hey are you hungry like so how's like this like they literally are just like fucking sitting there it's fucking weird. I'm like I don't like I'm it's already hard taking care of the kids I'm not trying to have like this awkward ass person sitting here, and I'm like trying to make all of us comfortable you know what I mean. So then my mom comes, everything's kind of cool, and then, like, obviously, like, it's a reminder, she's my mom, she's never been there, so she's, like, asking me dumbass questions about the kids, the baby daddy's, like, oh, are you gonna put them on child support, I'm telling her why, and she's, like, and I'm basically, if you guys don't know the reason why I haven't, is because, one, I just don't want to deal with the courts, two, they don't want to be on it, three, when I say I'm gonna be on it, they threaten me with, like, one, Max's dad, He'll threaten me with, like, showing her text messages in court of, like, me, like, sending him, like, mean messages, like, calling him ugly and shit, telling him he's a piece of shit. And then Jet's dad will say, like, oh, if, if you put me on child support, I'm going to take the baby away from you and then put you on child support. So just, like, all these, like, little threats, even though that probably won't happen, it's just, like, like you guys really don't want to be on child support, like, so, yeah. And I'm just trying to get my own back. I'm not trying to, like, rely on the government. To, like, mediate between me and these niggas, like, not niggas, like, I really don't want to, but literally, like, they're niggas, like, <laughs> I don't even know what a nigga is, really, but, like, that's the first thing that comes to mind. So, she's just, like, asking me dumbass questions, and it's just, like, it's just weird, like, and then I remember watching this psychoanalyst, if you guys know me, I love, um, what's her fucking name? Oh, fuck. I forgot her name. I'll insert it here when I edit this video back. Um, she's a psychotherapist, and she basically, like, she, um, is an advocate for, like, kids and stay-at-home moms, because she's, like, says, Erica Komisar, Erica Komisar, she says, daycares are bad, moms have to be there for, like, the first three years in order to build that, um, establishment I forgot I need to for a while I was like super on it um, attachment security if you attachment security is basically like it helps like I don't know it helps like manage your child's emotions it helps you know help them feel secure and basically while your child is like growing up between zero to three they're like they start to explore and that's why the mom needs to be there because when they're exploring they need to like be able to like look back and lean on the mom and make sure like what they're doing is safe there's a lot to it it even goes as deep as like why you don't want to like teach your child like cognitive skills like like reading colors like numbers like too soon because if they haven't attached if they haven't developed attachment security and like been able to like you know stabilize their emotions then they can get like frustrated when trying to learn. So you want to make sure your child is like good, established, knows you're there, feels safe, loved, everything. Um, knows that you're not gonna abandon them, and then they can like feel comfortable like learning, and they'll be able to handle their emotions. Oh yeah, so Erica Commissar said that like oh. People think that babies just have colic. There's like a lot to it, but she's like, yeah, people think colic is just like a digestive issue. And she's like, yeah, sort of, but really it's because babies have this feeling of like, it's like they can feel energies, so their like stomach is off because like the environment is off. And like the whole time my mom and my sister was there, I just felt like this feeling in my stomach where I just felt like so uncomfortable around them. Like I was just like so tense definitely not at peace like they don't bring me like I didn't feel any peace you guys um but yeah I'm trying to get the flash out of this but yeah I just didn't feel comfortable around them it's just weird like I don't know I think the weird part is that like I just don't know what to call my mom. 
I don't want to call her mom. I don't want to call her mother. I don't want to call her by her nickname. I don't want to call her by her, her real name. I don't know. I do genuinely, I don't think my family are bad people. I just think there's a communication barrier. And either I don't know how to communicate or they don't. And so it's just like these unresolved issues. And yeah, and I think just because of that, I think I'm ready to move out. And, and so, yeah, so midway through her visit, I guess Max, when she came, Max was sleeping, so she didn't get a chance to see Max. Um, and so after, so midway, I guess she was kind of getting bored, like, okay, Max isn't waking up, like, this is awkward, so I felt awkward too. And, um, she started talking on the phone with her friends and stuff, and they're like, yeah, like, let's go here. And she was like, alright, bet, basically. And she's like, alright, I'll be there soon. I think they're going to like somewhere in clear water. And so sure enough, she's like, alright, well, Maxie's not waking up. I'll try to stop by tomorrow. Bye. And literally, like, got up and left. Like, she would give a hug. And as soon as she got up, my sister, like, followed right after. So it just kind of felt to me like, Are you struggling with fishy discharge? Does your vagina feel a little off? Does it smell a little off no matter how many times you wipe? No matter what you do, no matter what you put in, no matter what you use to clean it out, it just, the smell does not go away. Well, I think you may have bacterial vaginosis. You know how I know? Because I've suffered with it for like most of my adult life. <laughs> Unfortunately. But I'm here with good news. If you are struggling, you don't have to struggle anymore, guys. Down um, below this video, I have a link to my step-by-step -step course where I show you exactly how I myself have... You right? Where I show you step-by-step -step what I do to get rid of my bacterial vaginosis. Literally, like, the course is like five minutes, guys. It works. It's effective. Once it's gone, it's gone. I have a video if you guys want to check it out. Like, just search in my videos, like, bacterial vaginosis. I show you what to not do so it doesn't come back. But granted, if you do... If you don't do what you're not supposed to do, then it won't come back and you will be BV free. And that's how I've been. The course is $10,997, but it's definitely worth it. If you like stress, if you have um, if you have something to do, if you gotta like sleep with your man tonight, or you know, you just like have to get on with your life and you don't wanna like leave the house smelling like a fish, well then buy my course and it'll literally be gone and you can like, get ready and leave and you'll be good to go so yeah i hope you take advantage of this opportunity bye bye so yeah so when my mom had gotten up and my sister followed right after i felt like they were kind of both ready to go and it just kind of made me feel like shitty i was like dean It just brings up a lot of childhood wounds. Like, I feel like I'm just, like, easily disposable. And I feel like people don't respect my boundaries, my time, my space. No, no, no. Put it back. Don't leave it. Not touch. Come back down. Feels like no one respects me. No one respects my space, my time. And I feel like, dang, like that's what I want. But I feel like because I don't have money, I'm on my entrepreneur journey. People think I'm crazy. People think I'm overly emotional. People think 
Um, I have like mental health issues. Um, no one takes me serious. And it sucks that you have to like reach a certain status in order for people to see your worth and listen to what you have to say. But as of right now, I'm, I'm incredible. And that's what's been stressing me out too because I just hate feeling like this. I hate... Oh yeah, and then I had a dream that like... So when she left, it just left me unsteady. Like how she just like came, left, like was gonna take Max, didn't. Just sitting there, like asking me weird ass questions, just awkward silences. After all that, I just felt so drained and like, I damn near felt like I was dying. I feel like, I just feel like this weight, heavy weight over me and I feel like I'm dying. And that's why it's so important for me to have to get out of this house because anything like that, it'll just put me in a funk the whole day. And it's easy to be like, yeah, you can't let one part ruin your whole day and it's like, well, it does. Like, I won't feel good until I fall asleep, which I'm trying to do soon. But, like, my whole day is ruined. There's nothing that I like. I mean, I don't say there's nothing, but for the most part, considering how my day goes, there's nothing in my day that can make me, like, to that will recalibrate me to how I felt before then. Like, I was perfectly fine today. I was happy. I was singing. I did the rosary, I was working on my blog, like, and then as soon as she came, shit, I was like, I'm a loser, no one loves me, I'll never be, like, these are the thoughts I'm having, I'll never be successful, like, my kids are holding me back, just like having these super negative thoughts. And even though this is, has been my same reality, but I feel like when my family is around, that just kind of, those negative thoughts just kind of like resurface, you know? So my day's been ruined. I've been trying to read the Bible, but I'm just so depressed I don't even know what I'm reading. I can't like focus. The kids are kind of like all over the place. They're not letting me focus. So I'm just going to pray, um, that's all I can really do, like I just, I feel so depressed right now guys, like I literally, when I feel like this, I'll get like a headache, like I'll, not only do I get emotionally, feel emotional pain, I'll literally start to feel physical pain, that's why I just, I can't keep feeling like this, like my pregnancy with Jess is so, my pregnancies have been so terrible. Because I'll literally be so emotional. Give me that Martha chip, okay, bye. I'll literally be so emotionally, like, in pain and distraught. And then I'll start to feel physical pain. Like, I'll have the worst migraines in the entire world. Like, damn near one, like, you know. Thank you, Max. Yeah. I don't know how I get like that or why I do. Because I don't think just anyone can get me into that space. But when it's like in your own like space, like my home, where I'm supposed to feel at peace, I feel like that's why it affects me more. Because like if I was on the street and someone was like, hey you bitch or something, like I'd probably be like offended or hurt. So like I'd probably be able to brush it off. But when it's like here in this space, this home where I'm... I want to feel loved and understood and respected and I get shitted on it's like dang and then on top of that I have nowhere else to go and I don't have anyone else to turn to it just hurts a lot more um but yeah that's just how I feel and then I had a dream so when she left I was like I gotta sleep this off so like I was just so depressed and down and just like Ugh. I was like, I have to go to sleep. And then I fell asleep. I had a dream that 
um, like, I guess one of, like, my second cousins. Um, basically, when I was younger, my grandma, my grandparents would leave me at my aunt and uncle's house. This is, like, a second side, like, second generation cousins. They would leave me at my aunt and uncle's. And, like, we would all, it would, so it would be, like, my cousin, his little sister, and then, like, me. I think it would be us three, basically. And we would be playing hide-and-go-seek. It would really be me and the younger cousin playing hide-and-go-seek. Me and the girl cousin. And then when I would hide, the boy would, like, be, like, touching on me and stuff. I don't know if I would hide in his room. But whenever I would hide in his room, he would, like, lay down behind me and, like, rub his dick on me and stuff. And I had a dream... When I had the dream, I had a dream that he, like, came to the house. And I was just like, what? And I think, and this is, like, now reality. Um, I, I have, like, kind of, like, subtly told my grandma that, like, he, like, did stuff to me. But either she was, like, in her mood and didn't listen to me or hear me. Or she listened to me and didn't believe me. So I don't know if she knows or if she just shrugged it off. Probably shrugged it off, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think that just kind of represents how my grandma treats me. She just shrugs things off. And then two, it just sucks not having your own space because my grandparents just invite whoever they want over. And it just kind of sucks because I'm just kind of introverted. I'm trying to cut ties with my family. And so when people are just, like, showing up to the house unannounced, it's just kind of, like, a trigger for me. Like, I hate when people come to the house. Yeah, you guys can tell. I'm just so over my family. Anytime anyone, like, from my family comes over, whether it's, like, my grandma's cousins or, like, wives of, like, cousins. Like, you know, just, like, extended family. Whenever they come, they just ask me the dumbest shit. Like... Oh, they just associate me with my mom. They're like, oh, why don't you get a job? Like, why don't you move out? You can get help from the government. Um, what, did, what did you go to college for? Were you studying college? Are you going to go back to college? Like, bitch, does it look like I'm going to go back to college? Does it look like I want to go back to college? Do you see, like, this desire for me to go back? And they'll just ask me the stupidest shit, and it's like, I'm just thinking about big, like, like, big girl shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking about, like, creating passive income, generational wealth, investing in multifamily, learning how to set up a website, learning SEO, like, all this shit, and they're, like, asking me, like, yeah, you know, you can get Section 8. Like, bitch, like, does it look like I want to be on Section 8? Does it look like I even want to be talking to you right now? Like, no, I have to because I don't have anywhere else to go. <laughs> See, guys, I'm just going to pray. I don't like this energy. I'm, I'm going to pray. You guys can kind of hear me pray.
Oh, I was just kind of thinking. If you guys, if you've ever watched my video and you're like, I do not like that bitch. I don't like me either. Like, to be quite honest, like, you have all right to not like me. Because I'm not, I'm not even me. I'm not me, guys. I am, I am filled with trauma, pain. Um, abuse, and so the way I treat, the way I talk now, the way I treat my kids, this is just a product of how I've been treated. So hopefully you guys will be along for the journey to see me move out, and I really hope you guys can meet what I'm really doing. It'd be really nice if you guys would be able to see the transformation of who God wants me to be and who I am after I step into my purpose. But right now, I probably am like off and crazy and all these things, so you have all right to like not like me because I'm not who God wants me to be right now. Oh my gosh, these are the days that like I wish I had a husband or like a friend to just get the kids. feeding us today, Lord. I want to thank you for the food that was made for us today so that we can continue to be healthy and strong in order to fulfill your purpose you have for us, Lord. Lord, I ask that you continue to give me and the kids health so that they could grow up to be very healthy and strong and live a long, beautiful life. I want to live a long and beautiful life as well, Lord. Please continue to protect me and the kids. Continue to protect us from evil spirits, evil energies, kidnappers, murderers, sex traffickers, pedophiles, creepy people. Just please protect us, Lord. 
Please heal all hearts and minds on earth, Lord. Please stop all these negative things that are going on in the world, Lord. And help people find you so that we can all fulfill your purpose, Lord, and do what you have us here to do. But until that happens, Lord, just keep me and the kids safe from all these crazy people out here. Lord, I also want to ask you to continue to fill me with peace and love, Lord. Continue to give me patience, the patience I need to raise the kids, the patience I need to, for me and my businesses so I don't get overwhelmed. Um, just continue to work on me every day, Lord, and I'll continue to show up for you and the Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary, Mother Mary, Holy Mary, I love you. You're the true mother. You're the true essence of a mother. Thank you so much for your beautiful existence and for birthing sweet Father Jesus. Jesus, I love you so much. I always get emotional when I talk about you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do. I aspire to be just like you, Lord. I want to love how you love. I want to forgive how you forgive. And I just want to be an exact representation of you, Lord. Thank you so much. For dying for all of our sins, Lord. Thank you, God, for raising Jesus from the dead. Lord, I don't know. I feel like I'm being grateful, but I just don't want to be complacent, Lord. I want you to remove anyone in my life that's holding me back, Lord. <laughs> remove me first, okay? Remove me first and then remove them. It's, I feel like it's this house, Lord. Please remove me from this house. Please remove me from this room. This room where I got caught having sex with, with a man that was over age and gave me chlamydia, Lord. In this room where I've hidden and cops have came to find me. In this room where I've almost committed suicide, Lord. In this room where I've wept, been depressed, scared, alone. Just break me free from this home, Lord. So many terrible memories in this room. to do, Lord. Do I need to be patient? Or is there something I'm not doing? I don't know what I'm doing right or wrong, Lord. I know I need help with the kids, Lord. I feel like that's the first step. Can you align me? Can you align my life in a way where I can meet amazing people, Lord? That we can help each other with our kids.
someone I can communicate with and, and set my boundaries with them about the kids and they're not going to get offended. Or I think I'm attacking them or their character. Mother Mary, I'm sorry for not acknowledging my whole life. You're the mother I've always needed. And never had. Please heal my relationship that I have with my mother. My father. I don't want to hold any more resentment in my heart. I don't know if that means I just need to ignore them. Or if maybe you can help open up a way for us to communicate better. I have a feeling not much will change if you and if we do communicate. But I don't know. It's obviously not up to me, right? longer I can keep living like this Lord. I'm tired Lord. Sleep, Lord, please help me go to sleep so I can shake off this heavy and evil feeling and spirit. In the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, I repent any negative thought, any thought that denies my faith in Jesus, Virgin Mary, and God. I repent. I deny. I don't want no negative feelings. No bad ideas. No thoughts that get in the way of how I feel about God, Jesus, and the Virgin Mary. I believe in God, Jesus, and the Virgin Mary. And any negative thought. I demand and I command that it be gone. I demand that there be no evil spirits near me or my kids or this home. They are not welcome. They have never been welcome. And they must leave now. In the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, I demand that all negative thoughts and evil energies and spirits and demons vanish away right now. They have, I don't want no part. We don't want no part with that. So they must leave right now. Me and my kids, my family, and this home is covered in the blood of Jesus. The God, the Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega, our Savior, our Warrior, our God. Yes, Lord, remove these bad thoughts from my head, Lord. Remove these negative feelings. Remove this pain I'm carrying in my heart, Lord, please. Please, Lord, I don't want to... I don't want to cut my family off. Yeah. I don't want to cut my family off, Lord. If that's 
that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. But there's a way for these relationships to be salvaged and Lord, show me how. Heal their hearts too, Lord, I can't do this all on my own. For my grandpa, Don Brandi, Doña Egda, I pray for them help. I know they're reaching their end, but I want them to live as much as they can. I want to extend the life for as much as we can, God. Let's heal everybody on earth, Lord. Everybody that's suffering and dealing with pain, dealing with sickness of a loved one or themselves, are in pain, or disabled, or paralyzed, are bedridden. Heal them, Lord. You could do it, Lord. You have so much power, Lord, to heal this world. Let's heal this world, Lord, so that we could truly worship you the way you want us to, Lord. And we can all be in heaven with you and have an amazing eternity with each other. Come here, Max. Yeah? Come here. Yeah? Let's do your, your cross. Come on! Come on. No, that's... Stop. Be nice. No pushing. No? Mm. Cuddle. No. Cuddle with mama. Alright, go lay down. Go lay down and see your brother. This is my real cuddle for you.
go to bed. I know I need to. Get out of this funk. I can't keep laying like this. How long have I been laying here? Like an hour? 